Good afternoon, it's Rosemary Balu here from Art BOP and I'm in Spring Street, Tauranga with Murray Claude and Millie Newitt. Uh, Millie is of Creative Tauranga and Millie and Mal Murray have together curated the Art of Technology, which is a major exhibition in conjunction with the Tauranga Arts Festival. And Murray, you're going to take walk us through today. Yeah, we'll give you a brief, uh, brief rundown on, on everything that's in there. That's so cool. Thank There's you. There's a huge variety. Excellent. Here we go. Right. Let's start with uh, Matt Allport's little uh, little robots. The uh, the incubator makes these little R bots. He calls them out of bits of of um, bits of computer and and. This and the next couple of things that you'll see are a really good illustration of the variety of stuff that's in here. So the brief to artists was uh, this art, the test was this art would not exist if not for the technology that went into creating it or the technology you used or the technology it depicts. So you see that in these first three. So he's taken apart computers here to do this. And then we'll move on to Paul's high-speed photography. And I think I've seen these wonderful images previously. Yes, Mr. Olman. And he has been, Paul olman has been on the Art BOP show talking to us about his fabulous work. I think he has some other images further along too, doesn't he, Murray? He does, yes. He has this high-speed stuff and, and, and he has a lot of... Uh, long exposure stuff as well. He's a very, very talented photographer and the, the work that goes in behind the scenes to get this is just amazing. So, th so think about Matt's little robots, this work, and then this next one, which is Phyllis Jones. Phyllis is an artist that's living in Fokatani, and this is uh, a traditional charcoal and acrylic sketch, and, but in this time depicting Technology, so this wouldn't exist if not for these things being around. Yeah. Well, this looks familiar. This is the work of the director of the incubator, Simone Anderson. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. These are some steampunk works that uh, Simone had and uh, has has done, and they've got titles that are far too far too long for me to try and say. <laughs> And it's actually quite interesting because we found that there is a lot of interest in steampunk and Jenny Argonte has just submitted two, uh, a book review of two um, references for steampunk and that will be published I think in Art BOP Alternative this month. So right on. Yeah, it, it is a, a growing movement that's for sure. So, <laughs> so this headphones and saints. Yeah, a lot of people stand and look at this one, uh, and uh, they're taken in some ways. And I think it's the contrast between how old this looks, complete with the the crazing on the on the um, on the faces, and contrasted with the headphones stenciled on. So, well, I think they're stenciled on. Forgive me, someone, if they're not. We've got three. Uh, three artists that have never exhibited before exhibiting in the exhibition and this is one of them. This is uh, Lisa Rogers Owen and she, this work is best in show and she's made this by the, the dog's faces and she's made this by tearing apart um, computer mice and printers and yes. putting them together. Oh, they're whimsical yeah. aren't they? Yeah so she's got a really nice story actually. She um, she made a, a, a pact with herself to do something that stretches herself out of her comfort zone every year, and this is what she's doing this year. So, so cool. And it re really is a stretch for somebody when they're going to do their first exhibition because it really is quite nerve-wracking. Because you're an artist in your own right, aren't you, Murray Claude? Yes, I do a bit. We'll get to, we'll get to that we'll get soon. To one yes, of mine. I've yeah. seen you before and I like what you do. Uh, well, the Look stuff in here is nothing like the stuff you've seen before. So, this is Graham Thompson's work, and Graham's got a, a few things in the exhibition, and we'll 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 touch on them as we go around. That, that I guess there's three families of them, and they're quite different. So this one is it's done by Graham when he's older, but as if he was younger. 
So oh, is that kind of almost like following the theme that was at Lightwave Gallery? It, it is, and he did, he yes, had work in Lightwave as well. That's right. Yeah. Yes, very clever man. Yes, he is, and and you'll see when we get to some other work, he's got this, and, and the breadth of his imagination is just amazing. Uh, so Jill Jill Brody. Now Jill's got uh, three pieces in here now. She started off with with one, and that's been popular and sold. She's brought another couple in. And and Jill does. Uh, Jill's an award-winning photographer. Yes, I know Jill. And uh, she does work that I don't know. Do you describe it as a montage or a, or a collage using it's using they're, photography? They're almost like a photographic montage collage, if you don't mind, because they're so they're transformed works. Aren't they, they are. Yeah. And there's always this element of. Um, I don't know, and richness and, and as you can see from the overarching decor in that one, something quite feminine but also quite otherworldly. Yes. Even even these ones of the gondolas kind of look. It's a special part of the day to capture that, isn't it? It is. And this one here is you, you might not be able to see it on, on the video, but this one is uh, it's actually it's got actually a, a got piece a applied to it there of... and some, some little do diamantes yes. on it. They... I love the I love the depth on that one. So we'll quickly move on to uh, oh, this some is more of Paul's work. work that cover a broad spectrum of colours and styles, and I have to say. I adore the black and white. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, this, this group here is uh, really highly worked photographs and, and it takes you a little while to realise they are photographs and they're not some sort of painting. Yes. These works are long exposure photographs, these, these five here. And again, it's the, 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 in this exhibition because of the element of the technological in composing these fabulous black and white images. Exactly right. It, it would not exist if it, if it wasn't for the technology around the long exposure and around photography and the post-production that goes mm. into them. Yeah, so. Yes, 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 I have to say I've seen these before and they're fabulous. I wrote that, um, that he has produced uh, an eminently commercial, fabulous body of artwork. Yes, yeah. They, yeah, so Cole set himself a, a challenge of... It's Cole Jamison. Cole Jamison, yes. yes. Set himself a challenge of doing 100 of these in 100 days. So coming up with a fresh idea every day. And he did it. We've got 50 here and 50, another 50 in the window. And um, they've been, been really popular. Have they been selling? Yes, yeah, I'm they have. sure yeah. they would. The the most popular one would be <laughs> this I, one here. And I hesitate to say I wanted that one to put in one of my articles because it's <laughs> such a cool image <laughs> and very very now. It is, yeah. Um, yeah. And and this one here That's does it for people as well. It? Yes, yes really yeah. beautiful. What right. else do you think we should look at, Murray? Okay, well, we'll quickly... Uh, we'll do we have time just to peek around the corner? We do, that yeah, yeah. fabulous um, image with... Now, it's an image, an art installation, where basically you're looking at a video reproduction of a firework display. Yes, yes, and yeah. you're de deliberately doing it without sound uh, to take away one one channel of how you normally see fireworks. So it's, a, it's at its quietest time right now, but it, so it's projected onto this gauze so that it looks 3D. And, and what Serena, Serena Smith did this, what Serena wants you to do is, is walk amongst it so that, so that it's on both sides of you. Mm. Oh wow, I didn't do that, that's so, so it, good. It, um, it feels different also for people watching somebody walk in and, and now it starts getting Damn. spectacular. So cool. Yeah. And the idea is I think that in your head you make those booms and Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yep. Okay. So we've got a couple of well, we've got more than a couple. We've got lots of images here from a company called Art Game Three D. The art for these these works is created in Tauranga and the process for 
for doing these is was created here as well. They're now exported all over the world. Wow. And um, what would they be? Are they used if commercially or domestically? What would you do with this? Oh, we've got them here on notebooks and uh, in bookmarks, and they do they do posters and. So these huge images, would people buy these very large images? Not not normally because these are five thousand dollars each, um, and it's it's not the sort of thing that I, that a lot of people would say. Yes, I want that at in the end house. of my hallway. Yeah. But the uh, the little notebook ones and the and the bookmarks have been really popular. Oh, where yeah. are they? Oh, they're over, over here. here. Yeah. That's cool. So there's, there's a whole you know lot what of. You're getting for Christmas, don't you, Diver? Pretty stunning images. Yeah. This is my favourite. Oh yes. Um, oh, I like that. Look at the panther. Black panther. That's. Very good. Mm. Shall we have a quick look at more of Serena's work? So, so Serena Smith, who did the fireworks, yes, also, also well. did these, and these react to the light. So these these will glow in the dark. We took them now into the darkness. You'd see them set so and glow. So it is playing with light and shadow and colour, part of her theme of her artwork. I guess it is. It is a good observation, and because all three of her pieces do play with light. Yes. Yep. Another one of Jill's. So this is Killing Time in Prague. Oh, wow. And that really is a montage of different images and from that's, Prague. Yes, that's very clever. This, uh, Jason Edgecombe, who put this together, mm. is, a, right. is a big gamer. Oh. And... Um, he he wanted to show the evolution of the art that's around gaming. gaming. So in the mid seventies, this was what the state of the art was, and you went up and down with the bats. But then we have uh, a progression of different work, different um, different examples. So we've got a progression of different examples here of of the art over time, right through to what's capable now. So it's gone from that in the 70s to this sort of capability now, which is almost cinematic. It is, isn't it? So that's what he wanted to demonstrate. And is this what you were playing on when I showed up this afternoon? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Serena's third work which is a lamp made out of polystyrene cups. Oh, it's wicked. beautiful. So again, this the, the, the breadth of imagination that was applied to the brief that I gave the artist is, is amazing, where you can go from, from, from that to, I mean, that's the other extreme, or Phyllis's is and, the... And what we've actually got in this exhibition already is we've got examples where people have taken the word technology and use that as just basically the trigger for an artwork but other things you're showing me where technology is not only artistic but it's highly commercial yes 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 yeah. so we'll stop here at uh, oh, another lot of Graham's yes, Graham's work I'm yeah. familiar with the work that Graham has done in this kind of genre from Lightwave. Yes, so I love these, these are neat, the way, especially the ones where the faces are disconnected. Oh, and would that be the Black it's Widow down there, Darth Vader's that's girl? That's very steampunk. Isn't it cool? That's, uh, a, he's got a series of aristocrats and yes. that's called Lady in Black, mm -hmm. that one, and Lady in Red. So this is Paul, Paul Cornwell, he's a, a graphic artist in town and he does uh, a lot of his work uh, aided by photography, so he will... Um, and the redoubtable V-dub at the end. Yes, so even though this, this here looks like a, a print of a photograph, it's actually a painting, but it's it's based on what he's a photograph he's taken and, and worked up through 
through digital means. Has he? Has he? He's actually painted the painting, or he's painted the photograph. He's transformed the photograph he took originally. D he's done both: transformed the photograph, then painted the yes. transformation. Right. So there is actual oil paint on that. Yeah, I think this is acrylic, but there is actual. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a painting. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's got depth to it, um, reminiscent of, of an oil painting. And, and a bit of fun to it as well. Oh, I know. And in fact, I looked at that when I first came into this exhibition and had a laugh because up our road, there was a huge pine tree with one of those in it that we all used to have to climb miles and then just jump out and jump on and one. grab it. Yeah, no, you used to sit on it until it actually came close enough to the ground that you could jump off. I don't know do you still do it? I don't know what I should say mm. now, but no, it's not in the list of approved children's playgrounds. Oh, I saw Christy this morning down at the Arts Village exhibition. Yes. And she mentioned yeah. her work here. So, so yeah. Christy, Christy Kramer interpreted the, the, um, the brief this yes. way, and the, the, the technology of construction. So these, she saw these cranes in Greymouth, I think. Yes, and then uh, decided that she wanted to paint them and, and they yeah, would they fit are. in here and she pulled it apart to do something a bit different than and just painting the crane. And that's another example of how unique to each artist their interpretation of your brief has been. Sure is, yeah. 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 So on to yet another different interpretation. So th this is the, uh, the mysterious McMahon duo did this so Alistair and Rose McMahon you might know Rose as Little Miss Rose the photographer she's New Zealand's youngest professional photographer mm. so her and her father got together and thought what could they do and they've done these Facebook pages as if those artists had those they Facebook pages life. and some of the conversations on them are, are really funny use my starry night that would be nice on a ceiling <laughs> Thanks, but I think the Pope is after more of a God theme. So they, That's brilliant. I know. Oh my God. These are painted. These are painted. These are printed on glass. Uh, printed on tempered glass. So they are very, very well done. They're, they're done by um, glass art in Mount Monganui. Dive art. I just have to recount this one. Pablo Picasso about the Mona Lisa, you'll notice her lips aren't there on the image. Just paint the lips like a triangle, it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Too cool. It's very cool. So original and so cool. Mm. Oh, it would be like awesome to have these for a whole bunch of those legendary artists. Yeah. It'd be very cool. And, and linked together. Yeah, like a series. There's an added dimension to this one. And there's what looks like a spelling mistake here. It's got Spatchat instead of Snapchat. But if you go to www.spatchat.org, there's another layer on the internet oh, wow. that relates to that. So cool. that is, you could not do that without the technology yeah. that went to create it or the technology that it's about. So, yeah, right. Absolutely. so this, this work, Josh Cowan. Josh Cowan lives in Timaru, so Josh and I have never met. He heard about this through the internet, posted these up to me, got them on display, and I'll just post them back. So, so not everybody who's displayed here is a Tauranga local? No, nope, no. That's cool. So I, w I wanted to do that because I, w I wanted to say yes to Josh because that's another level of technology, the, what technology is doing to art. It's People bringing, all around the world yes, can, see can share and see different art. And these are cut with a laser, aren't they? These are laser cut uh, 78s in this, in this instance, so quite the thick older records, but he also does the vinyl LPs that are, that are common now. Mm. Are we avoiding the Murray Clode art? No, we're going to go that way. way. All right, I'll accept yeah. that. Dave. Oh no, I, I've already had a look in here. This so is Millie's, isn't it? This is Millie's. This is Millie's work. So Millie created a door to another portal. 
she, yes. she's out there, she could come and explain it. Cool. Emily, this is so cool. Do you want to take us through it? Well, yeah. you and Murray can talk about it, I think. Yeah, okay. The curators. Yeah. Well, let's start with the doors. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a collaborative piece in that um, I created the, the doors, so there's the outside of it, and then the viewer interacts with it by opening, opening them. And inside... And where's the gorgeous thing from yeah. the So oh, that's how you interact. <laughs> yeah, you can... Um, so this is, this is what Technology Wise and Murray with the exhibition organised, was the inside part where you can touch it and Murray will show you how to do that. So the, the idea of this is you, you create your own. Yes, it's so wonderful. Look so at it. you can it. Do, do all sorts of things. <laughs> Change the colour. Purple in it, shall we? That's so dope. Look at that. Right That's very cool. My very eyes. <laughs> <laughs> There's been all sorts of things created by people. Mm. Yeah. Much better than that. <laughs> yeah. oh, I think that's fabulous. What a great collaboration, you guys. Yeah, so the idea with the doors, too, is that you're, you're, you're taking in, taken into another world, so that idea of which world would you rather live in and um, yeah. So like it's like going from like the leafy earth realm to like the techno like tree mm. realm. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Well, and as much too that this is what we see these days that technology is now behind and an integral part of the natural environment. There's mm. no getting away from it. Mm. Great work, Gary, too. Mm, thank you. Yeah. It's a great show, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It is, isn't it? It's just. Cool. So Do you varied. two want to cover? Have you got a minute to walk around with us to look at some of the other ex exhibits, Millie? Yeah. We, we haven't okay. done that one yet, have we? No, that's, there's two different ones there. That's, um, do you want me to take that? Yep. <laughs> so this is Graham Thompson again. So this is the third of Graham's work here, the third parcel. And um, so these are, are more interactive. The kids are allowed to touch these, and, and oh, there's, wow. he's put in all sorts of little surprises. <laughs> and it's um, it's called New World Order, and it and it's representing how the world's changing and the and the power of some of the world powers that, that are around now. This it's, is pretty, it's pretty overt um, symbolism, isn't it? It is, the, yes. Um, money, guns, where are the drugs and rock and roll? <laughs> yeah, well, you, Superman. you do. This one's about risk taking. And you can spin, spin the dial and crank up pressures and Touch the sticky brain. The brain's actually sticky. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But behind that, this is not Graham's behind it, this is Wendy Wendy uh, Peterson's oh, work. Wow. Wendy's another member of the incubator collective. She is, yep. So this um, this actually has little diodes in it that, that glow as well, but they're they're not working right now. But it's a coffee table. It's a in it actually works as a coffee table, in mm. fact. It's in her uh, son's room, it's and fabulous. she's not allowed to sell it. So. Mm -hmm. I should think not. Good mm. girl, Wendy Peterson. Wendy is an outstanding creative. I was down at the incubator one day, and Wendy, they had a beanie competition. Wendy is wearing a beanie, and the whole back and top of the beanie is a pink crocheted brain. Mm. It was <laughs> so clever. Hey. Yeah. But that's like... Uh, it uh, reminds me of like you know when you go to museums and they have like miniatures of old like old structures and mm. cities. Yeah. Yeah. So it's looks like, like a city, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like a. It's Does like to a me too. City. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This this one is uh, a work with that that um, I did along with Stephen Vincent uh, from Technology Wise and the base station, and what it. Each one of these phones has a different sound coming through it. 
and I heard one where it said you have mail. You have mail. You just keep saying you have mail. You have mail. You have mail. I thought you had mail, so I went to listen to see if I really did have mail. <laughs> <laughs> so what? The, so they get closer together because what they're representing is the pressure that you're you're under by uh, being so available by telephones these days, and it's just contrasted with the old telephones, and it hasn't failed to make people think about what it used to be like. And I mean, this is why we we refer to phoning somebody as dialing. Yes. And, and a lot of kids don't even know that. I've got one of those at home as an art object. There you go. So Stephen and I put this together, and uh, as you get to the end and you've listened to all these, you realise that it was really all a load of gibberish and you didn't need to listen to it anyway. <laughs> Which is just like a normal phone call. <laughs> Where'd you get all these cool phones? Oh, Stephen had uh, Stephen had most of them, but we we bought some additional ones off the internet, and that one down there was from my the black one is from my house when I was growing up. It's my old phone number. It's such a great piece. So many people have commented on it and um, bought it. I mean, it's. Yeah, been really popular, and I really like seeing it big like this too, because we've got the the smaller version. And I really like that you've allowed people to personalise it with their own address. I think that that's a really yeah. unique feature. Yeah, people yeah. really connect with it for some mm. reason. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why, but they do. It so. gives you a real sense of belonging. And I actually asked Millie when you were going to put the little version on a t-shirt. Yes, I know. I saw that. I saw that program where you, Love where you did that. Uh, Love I, I've actually just inquired about that this week, about getting that done. So. Mm. Does it sell? Mm. Mm. Is there anything else in here that we should see you two talented people? Yes, there's, there's one artist we haven't even looked at yet, and she's got three works in here, so we, we'll, we'll right. quickly go and do that. Cool. She, I should... I've got to go. So You're right. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Hey. Thanks, Millie. Now, this is amazing, Murray. We've got here a collaborative effort by Lepika Sen and her partner. Yeah, her partner, Prabjot Majitiha. All right. And do you want to walk us through what they've done this time? Sure, sure. So this is uh, the Tricky Box, and the, the Tricky Box has three spaces that you look through and it's got some music playing and some lights on the inside as well. You spin these around and then you look through to see what was in your past, how people are seeing you now and what does the future hold for you. I think I'll avoid looking at all of those. I, I, tell, pe I tell people that if they don't like what's in the future they just spin it again, okay. just like real life. Oh, okay, yeah, that yeah. sounds good. Yeah. They, so they, the, they've actually exhibited not only in the um, in festivals around Tauranga, but this couple also, their work is well known in Auckland and around the place, yes. isn't it? and yes. internationally, yes. In, yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we've got that range in here from never exhibited before to in exhibited national internationally. Oh. Graham's exhibited more than 60 times, so there's a fair range That's of, fabulous. fair range in here. So another work by those two is uh, the cow peeing into the bowl but it, uh, I thought that was very clever it's actually a statement isn't it about the impact of the dairy industry on New Zealand's environment yes it is yep and notice there's no fish in the bowl the yeah. fish is dead I know yep and so and one last work by them I think it's the last but one he, that they also are known for their outstanding cartoons oh yes sorry I they didn't mention that, and, and that each of the works is accompanied by those. So the last, last couple of pieces. Now, behind you, Diver, yep. can you get this whopper? This is rather, rather too close to the bone, isn't it? It's an amazing cartoon of what you'd find at the Mount Monganui hot pools. Postcard from the, from the hot pools, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to show us some of these other works. This little musical piece oh. is, um, is also by them. And it, um, 
It's a little song that goes along with that animation. Very cool. So that kind of wraps it up. That's a, there's a huge variety of stuff in here and, and a huge display of talent. Locally. How long did it take you to get this fabulous exhibition together? Uh, been, well, we did this in 2013, but on a much smaller scale. Oh, right. A much smaller scale, and I decided I'd do it again in, in 2015, and really started at the start of this year, just gradually getting people aware of it and mm. talking to different artists. So Lipica was one of the first that I talked to, and... And at that stage, things were really up in the air. It was going to happen, but where and exactly when? And so that things took a while to get solid. And, and in fact, we didn't actually have a venue until about a week before. We I did had open. heard that, and I thought, what an amazing fortitude of an artistic curator that you went ahead without a permanent venue. <laughs> That's another big tick, and thank you from the community that you well, did that. It was it was going to happen. I know just that where it was going yeah. to happen was, and and where has it actually been really important because we've got a lot of people through because of where we are. So I next came in the people. weekend. Yes, on the commun ANZ Community Day, and I'd have to say, despite the weather, this place gave a very good impression of being packed. Uh, there was about four hundred people through. Yeah. that day, wow. yes. It's really been worthwhile. <coughs> it has, yeah. And I presume that you, the people who've supported you and sponsored you have been most impressed by the actual exhibition and the response you've had to it? I think they have, yes, I think they have. So um, Vodafone and Technology Wise and, and Base Station were, were big supporters of us. So uh, Technology Wise did a lot of the, the IT work here and, and Vodafone connected us up to the to the internet, supported by uh, technology wise as well, and uh, the creative communities uh, scheme through the through the council right. uh, was the major funder, and uh, some of them have visited. I invited them all along, and some of them were able to come along, and and they were very pleased with what Excellent. they saw, and I'm sure they'll be pleased with those numbers that come through as well. Okay. Well, this has been a fabulous part of the Tauranga. Uh, Arts Festival 2015. You planning to do this again in 2017? Yes. Yep. So that's something we as a community and the visitors to Tauranga can look forward to. Thank you to all the sponsors and who've supported this and all the artists who've made this possible. We hope that you've enjoyed this trip through the art of technology and you can see other walkthroughs of exhibitions and events around Tauranga on the Art BOP show. And a final word, thank you to our producer, director and cameraman, Dive Art Mater, whose talent and steady hand makes these walkthrough recordings possible. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>